Now, there are some signs of Ukrainian forces gaining ground and pushing back Russian forces. Intelligence reports say Ukraine has retaken ground west of Kyiv and has destroyed a, Russian, uh, a ship in Russian-held territory. Now, when Russia launched its invasion a month ago, it expected to take Ukraine in a lightning offensive. Against all odds, though, Ukrainian forces continue to keep one of the world's biggest armies at bay. But that resistance has come at a terrible price. Ukrainian forces pushing back and destroying a Russian ship at the port city of Berdyansk. This was one of the most glaring displays of Kyiv's resistance against Moscow's advance. On the front line in Irpin, just outside the capital Kyiv, Ukrainian forces say they have repelled the Russians with a series of counterattacks. <laughs> The Russians don't have the combat power. My men are hitting their supplies, and in Kyiv, armed citizens would be shooting from every window and door. Ukraine's defenses are holding. Vladimir Putin's hopes of a lightning war dashed. Russia's offensive has yet to reach Odessa on the Black Sea. But people here have been stealing themselves for weeks. Volunteers flock to the beach, not to enjoy the sun, but to fill sandbags for barricades. They want to help whatever it takes, and they believe in victory. No matter how bad the situation now in Mariupol, in Kharkiv, it doesn't matter, we will win. But this battle comes at a high price. Cities like Mariupol almost burned to the ground and turned into a ghost town and the human toll. It's hard to verify how many people have been killed in this war. In a crematorium in Kyiv, dozens of urns lay unclaimed. The relatives of the dead have had to flee and leave their loved ones behind. Now, officials in the Ukrainian port city of Mariupol believe some 300 people could have died in last week's Russian strike on a theater there. Hundreds of people were sheltering in the building in the center of the besieged city when it was hit. Mariupol, a strategic port and industrial center, has been under heavy bombardment for weeks. Civilians trapped there have little food, power or running water. And joining us from the western Ukrainian city of Lviv is our correspondent there, Fanny Fachar. Fanny, 300 people are said to have died in the bombing of the theater in Mariupol last week. Tell us, what more are you hearing about that? Local authorities in Mariupol are remaining in this conjunctive and the speculation formula could have died because it's really hard just to have the complete number of casualties there. When this attack happened last week, and I have to out point, there, point out there that in big letters in Russian, it said children in front of the theater trying to prevent that something like this can take place, an attack on basically internally displaced people who just were, were, were there trying to uh, somehow hold on, hoping that they could escape this horror. Now, it's unclear how many people were in the building. Last week, we heard the number 1,000. As a result, we cannot really verify and know the exact number. But along the report that apparently so many people have died there clearly tells you that this attack, not just only sent shockwaves here across Ukraine, but also so many parts of the world, as people are wondering just how far this uh, Russian attack against Ukraine is going to go, as they claim they just want to fulfill their plan, which is about demilitarizing this country. Now, we're hearing the Ukraine has said uh, it sank a Russian su supply ship. What could that mean for Ukrainian morale? Could that be a boost? But given the fact that this is not just a very strategic port there, uh, very close to Mariupol, about one and a half hours under normal circumstances, but also the fact that Ukraine, of course, needs to somehow keep up the spirit here among those who want to resist, be it people at the front line or people who return to Ukraine, even here to the town of Lviv in western Ukraine, to show resistance by simply returning to a war-torn country. So any success or that can be seen 
as a success by Ukrainian forces is something that really the Ukrainian government is clinging on to. This is something uh, they directly need to keep the spirit up. We shall not forget that this war has been going on or going on now for more than four weeks and what else is there to come so it's very important but in terms of in terms of what it signals in terms of a military success we shall not forget either that russia remains superior given the number of troops given the military gear they have um, Ukraine is also accusing Russia of abducting thousands of civilians evacuated from cities uh, such as Mariupol tell us more about those accusations that's quite interesting, actually, because Ukraine claims about 400,000 people have been force, forcibly uh, removed from Ukraine. And that very same or similar number, more, about more than 400,000, uh, was also the number Russia used. But they uh, painted a different picture. They said that these people wanted to leave voluntarily and that they are uh, helping them even financially. So claims and counterclaims there, which of course doesn't change the situation on the ground, which is that at least 100,000 people remain trapped in Mariupol, not only there, also in heavily shelled Chernihiv, uh, Chernihiv uh, places like Kharkiv, Sumy and others. So the humanitarian catastrophe keeps suffocating so many parts of Ukraine, regardless of what we cannot verify yet, because we cannot talk to people who apparently have been uh, uh, taken to Russia or not. This is something that we will know mm -hmm. as soon as actually we have access to talk to people. Um, Fanny, just briefly, what's the sense amongst Ukrainians about how much longer they can keep going under these circumstances? The people I've been speaking to uh, over the past week, for example, they keep saying they want to resist. There's no way that Ukraine is going to give up any land. But at the same time, of course, there's growing frustration because they, they do see all the video links that uh, President Zelensky is trying to basically call on political leaders in a very emotional way. But on mm -hmm. the other hand, there's disappointment that all the promises by uh, foreign politicians fall short of the expectations of Ukrainians. So people want to resist, but at the same time, at the very same time, they do want that the international political uh, decision makers mm -hmm. step in and increase their support militarily in any way they can. Fanny Fachar in Lviv, Ukraine. Thank you so much.